The United States is running concentration camps on our southern border. Say what? Welcome to Roundtable Decision. I'm your host, Wyatt Birkenhoff. And for today's video, we're going to talk about the Democratic debates. In particular, the first debate. There are two debates for the Democratic presidential candidates for 2020. There are 20 total candidates and they're split in between crowds of 10. And the first debate is today at uh, 9 to 11 Eastern Time on NBC or other stations. All the mass media sources will be covering the debate in some ways, in some extent, such as CNN itself, as you see here, as well as many other YouTubers who will probably be live streaming it, as I know Steven Crowder has planned on live streaming. In this demogra demo uh, graphic here, you could see the 10 candidates, what are going on for tonight, and the 10 candidates will, will be performing tomorrow. The most notable candidates that are performing tonight would be Elizabeth Warren, Bill de Blasio, Cory Booker, and Beto O'Rourke. Those are probably the biggest names inside those uh, presidential candidates. And I know a lot of people are also big fans of Amy Klobuchar because she seems to be more of a reasonable Democrat or moderate Democrat as Joe Biden will be running. But that issue coming up, I thought I would highlight the the 10 people who will be performing tonight since the video was about these 10 people. So there are four candidates in the Iowa coalition in Miami. The leading candidate on the stage Wednesday night have different ideologies, poli policy proposals, and political styles, but they share a common strategy. All are betting big on Iowa. Mr. Booker and Mr. or sorry, Miss Warren <laughs> have almost the biggest campaign staffs there. Beto O'Rourke, a former representative from Texas, has brainstormed the state. And Omi, Amy Klobuchar, a senator from Minnesota, is the, next, is the neighbor next door. Will any of these make the Hawkeye Pacific pitches? In need of a breakthrough. Perhaps no two contenders at the preparatory of their top tier need a big moment more than Mr. Booker and Mr. O'Rourke. So, Booker himself has been in the news recently for comments he said, and he's more of an extremist Democrat compared to Beto O'Rourke. Beto O'Rourke was a broken candidate as he lost Texas to uh, Senator Cruz. So, a lot of people could be attacking uh, him for his loss against Cruz. And in particular, uh, both of them are rather rocky candidates, and I don't see either making it through. But he's not the only Texan, as there is one other Texan, Julian Castro, or Julian Castro, the former San Antonio mayor who is big on immigration and the border, as anti-border from as far as I can tell. And one of his claims is that he's a Texan and he knows the border better than any of the other candidates, including Beto himself. And in the course with the Democratic candidates, you're going to have an ideological divide. And I'll read this whole one here because I thought this was rather interesting as it hinted on an earlier point I made. This is not the heavyweight ideology show them that we expect to see Thursday night's debate. But the gulf between Miss Warren and Miss Klobuchar in terms of policy positions is striking and something both candidates may seek to highlight for now. Ms. Kobachar is drafting behind Mr. Biden on the centrist line. Can she make a move here without him on stage? So again, as I've already said, Ms. Kobachar is much more of a centrist and she's anti-war or anti-foreign war or any anti-involvement in war, which is a very liberal type of view what a lot of people are favored to. Rather than Ms. Warren is very much the Democrat you'd think of if you were to think of a Democrat these days. She's, she stands on the classic Democratic stance, I guess you could say. But there's also some single-issue candidates. What I, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but essentially Jay, the governor of Washington State, is very much a climate change uh, person rather than the governor or the uh, 
representative from Hawaii is expected to be much more of a United States strike against Iran. So she's going very much about foreign involvement in uh, Iran and in Russia and in Syria and about her defense strategy with those things. So she's running on very recent, recent news, especially with the Iran. So she's hoping that this recent news will get her some attention as she's not the most popular candidates out there. So I'll quickly go through the candidates, all the candidates, all 10 of them real quick, just so you know who's on the stage. Bill de Blasio is the mayor and he's campaigning for administration's accomplishments in New York. So he was the mayor for New York and most recent candidate to qualify. That's Bill de Blasio and Bill is very much a... A classic Democrat as well, as far as I could tell, much more like Senator Warren compared to uh, other candidates for the Democratic Party. Then you have Tim Ryan, who is hoping to win the Midwestern states by appealing to the working class, as Trump voters did. So he's very much a guy wanting to, for lack of better words, expose or gain views uh, or gain votes from the working class. As a lot of Democrats say Trump did, or well, Trump did gain the votes of the working class, but a lot of Democrats say he exploited the votes. So Tim Ryan looks to maybe doing the same. Julian Castro is, again, that was the person who highlighted on immigration. So he's very much a one-issue uh, approach on immigration where he says that those of us in Texas know about the border, as I've said earlier. He says that he has knowledge of the border and he can fix it. And that was one of the reasons why Trump won was because of the uh, border security or border control he wanted to implement. Even though... Uh, Julian Castro, so far as I can read, looks to be doing the opposite of what Trump wants to do, but he still says that he knows a way for immigration to become better. Cory Booker is probably the one what is the second highest for the polling, I believe, with the 2%. And he's also a, a businessman and mayor of Newark. And uh, he's very much a classic Democrat with more extreme views than most Democrats than a basic Democrat, I would say. And he wants to run with his tax credit plans. So he's very much a tax-centered uh, uh, person. And Elizabeth Warren is obviously the candidate what's going to be the uh, forerunner for this debate and somebody who's very much the lead for the party with only Joe Biden and uh, Senator uh, Bernie, Bernie Sanders from the other debates what's going to happen tomorrow those three are really the strongest candidates uh, so far before the debates happen so she's very much the classic person when you think of a democrat with her views on on elements and anyone who's followed news recently knows about her but her work is obviously someone who ran for el paso and he believes that we are not safe because of walls, but in spite of walls. So he's very much a no-wall border security person. And uh, he almost beat Ted Cruz in Texas this past election. And he may gain voters in that way because he does have 3% more than Cory Booker. So he might be able to gain that. The big one, what I've already said before, is Amy Klobuchar. And she has empathized her Midwestern background and taken a moderate take on issues like healthcare, student debt, and marijuana, or marijuana, marijuana legalization. Co-sponsored more bills that passed the majority of Republican Senate than any other senator since President Trump took office. So again, she's very much the neutral candidate. And if she's able to gain the more moderate working class voters, Instead of Trump, she might be able to win the Democratic side of things or at least go farther than most of the candidates in these debates. As she's probably the one where a lot of Republicans would put their money on to, to advance with Elizabeth Warren out of these groups. Tulsi Gabbard is an Iraq war veteran and has focused her campaign on opposing the U.S. involvement in what she calls the regime change wars. So again, she's also anti-foreign war, especially with Iraq. 
And as stated earlier, she seems to be taking more recent news to try to gain more voters as she's polling less than 1%. And she probably wants to advance to the next round where she could then put her foot into more pressing issues of her campaign. But she needs to get past the large group of less than 1%. Jay, the climate change person, is more, he says he has a centered campaign on proposals to address climate change and promote jobs and renewable energy. So he looks to be uh, exploiting the people that believe in climate change or believe that climate change is the number one issue compared to health care, our border crisis, our foreign war. He's exploiting the people that value climate change as the most. And if he's able to get those voters, he might be able to advance from the round. But I see it as unlikely as more of the working class voters he would have to have to advance or the Democrat voters what he would have to uh, outdo from the other candidates just seem unlikely. And then John Dinley, I think that's his name, says he would prioritize existing barbarization legislation in areas like criminal justice, immigration, and health care in the first 100 days of his administration. So he's one throwing a very broad claim or a very specific claim, even though those are two different things, it's he's doing the he's doing the same thing. He's 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 saying a phrase and then saying that he's going to accomplish the phrase, even though the phrase seems very broad but at the same time very unreasonable to accomplish. So by saying this promise it sounds good and it sounds like he knows what he's doing but the chances for it to happen seem very unlikely but just real quick i wanted to highlight the five things you might want to watch for in the debate as los angeles times has created and the first one is can warren leapfrog sanders so i'm not going to really read the article i'm just going to take their points i might read bits and pieces but warren is not in the debate with sanders but Sanders is her biggest enemy or her biggest potential to lose for Warren as they're both more extremist in their views. And Sanders himself in the last uh, presidential election cycle faced off against Hillary and Hillary ended up winning. But Bernie Sanders gained a lot of the college type of voting. And so if Bernie Sanders can't gain those voters and it goes to Bernie again, Sanders could be in some trouble for winning the entire thing. As many people think Sanders, or sorry, as many people think Warren is the biggest potential to win. Will a lower tier candidate catch fire? So again, somebody's going to have to lose the debate. And I think the people who are one party issues, such as Tulsi Gabbard and and uh, Jay Insane, Inslow or whatever his name is aren't going to advance it much because it's the first time I've even heard of this person, let alone his issue of climate change. I don't see it being a big enough issue to advance him compared to the other candidates. I could also see a Cory Booker going down in flames if he were to do his craziness a little bit too far. Have the times changed on global warming? So again, in 2016, the president was presidential debates to the disappointment of many voters in the outrage environments. So in 2016, they were claiming that climate change wasn't a big pressing issue as much as the Los Angeles Times or many other climate change centrist people thought it should have been. So will 2020 be that time for climate change to become a major issue. If it does, Jay Inslane, who is betting big on climate change, could be advancing. But I just don't see climate change as being the biggest issue, or global warming being the biggest issue compared to health care, national security, border control, and everything related to that. Will the candidates attack Biden even though he's not on stage? So this is the big one. Biden is by far the front runner, even though Elizabeth Warren has approached him closely. But the thing with Biden is he's obviously the candidate what a lot of people think has the most potential to go the furthest, uh, even more than Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders. So the question is, will they attack Biden or will they attack Trump? I'll add Trump to this. I think Trump will definitely be talked about in the debate. And Orange Man Bad, even though they might not say the phrase Orange Man Bad, Orange Man is going to be talked about 100%.
They're going to talk about what he's done wrong, and they're not going to talk about what he's done right. And they're going to attack him on issues what some people may even think he did right. But will they do the same to Biden? Yes, they will. They will attack Biden even though he's not on stage. Biden is someone they need to crumble. They want to crumble before he even gets on stage. So if they can break through what people think are his struggles and try to change the voters' mind on Biden... They will win their party's election. They will win their democratic debate. So essentially attacking Biden is going to be a huge political issue for these candidates. And I could see several of the front runners like Elizabeth Warren and Cory Booker attacking. Even though Cory Booker is not a front runner. But someone like Cory Booker attacking Biden even though he is not on stage. So, following these Democratic debates, even though you may not be a Democrat yourself or you may not find it that interesting, are still a potential to see how the Democratic Party is going to move on. Are they going to stay more centrist or are they going to go attack heavy like the past elections were? Thank you for watching my video and stay tuned for tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's video on the second set of candidates.